Welcome to another tutorial from Burton's Media Group. This is Dr. Brian Burton. In this tutorial, we're going to load a couple of meshes and add materials to some basic objects in our Babylon scene. That's going to include setting up the canvas, loading an arc rotate camera, adding a few lights, of course, loading our shapes or meshes, and then loading the materials or textures for those shapes. So let's jump right in. I'm using the Sublime editor. You can, of course, use Visual Studio or any editor that you like. In future videos, we'll jump into using the Babylon editor, but for now, we're just going to stick with using JavaScript. And in the future, we'll transition over to TypeScript. So here we have our basic HTML document where we've got our HTML markers, our head. We'll designate the title as our Hello World. Then, of course, we do need to load the Babylon.js framework that can be done using the script source set equal to the CDN. That's the content distribution network for Babylon.js.com. It's a little bit faster than using the preview or other designations. So we'll load the framework for Babylon.js using CDN.Babylon.js.com and forward slash Babylon.js. And then we'll define the HTML and body as the 100% of the browser window, and then set a render canvas to 100% width and height. Then we'll specify the HTML5 canvas ID as the render canvas referencing back. Now we'll transition into the script, which is going to be our JavaScript to work with Babylon.js. First, we will load the canvas. The canvas pulls in from our document ID, the render canvas. Then we'll load the engine based upon that canvas and the scene. Now that can be a little bit confusing. So let's take a look at what that actually means in the environment. So initially we are loading and defining an HTML canvas, specifically the render canvas. After we have loaded that HTML canvas, we're going to reference that inside of our script and I'm calling that canvas. So canvas is calling the renderer canvas. Then we're going to load the engine. The engine is going to reference that canvas. And then finally, we're going to load a scene. The scene is part of our scene renderer and it is referencing back to the engine. So all of this works together to reference the HTML canvas to work with the browser. So the scene references the engine, the engine references the canvas, and canvas references the renderer canvas or the HTML canvas that's defined in the header. Then we have our create scene. The create scene has our scene variable, which is loading or referencing the engine. This is our function for handling building the scene, or it's going to be referenced in our renderer loop. The renderer loop will constantly go through and look for any changes or updates to the scene based upon that function. Right now, if I were to run this, I'm going to get a blank scene. So here it is running off my local system using the Python server. If you're interested in learning more about the Python server, let me know in the comments down below and I'll show how I set up the Python server to run on my local system. We've got our new scene, which is going to reference the function create scene. So this new scene constantly runs create scene or references the create scene function for then use in our renderer loop. So the engine.run renderer loop constantly runs. Babylon.js has the goal of each loop of the render is going to be conducted at 60 frames per second. So we're going to run the renderer loop on average 60 frames per second. That's the goal for running inside the browser. So if this new scene exists, if this variable exists, then we're going to run the renderer for our create scene. And then finally, we got a little bit of script here to handle any resizing of the window that the user might do. And then we'll close the script, the body, and the HTML. So now we're ready to add our camera. For this particular project, I'm going to use a arc rotate camera. Of course, there's a lot of great cameras available for use in your projects. The arc camera, though, is going to work fine for what we're doing. Usually I use a universal or a web VR camera, but this will take care of everything we need. So let's add our arc rotate, and I'm going to do this with setting up a camera variable, and we'll set that equal to new Babylon. Make sure Babylon is capitalized. 
arc rotate camera we're going to give it the name camera and that's the name of it in the scene graph it becomes more important when we shift over to the editor but for now just know that the name is associated as its ID or name of the object inside the scene graph we need to set the alpha and the beta rotate now the alpha and the beta set the longitudinal and latitudinal rotation around the target object we're doing an alpha and beta rotation or the longitude and latitude around the central location inside so we've set the name we set the alpha rotation or the longitudinal lot rotation as math.pi divided by 2. The latitudinal rotation is math.pi divided by 2. The distance from our center location is going to be set at a value of 2 units. And then we're going to set the initial location of the camera as a new Babylon Vector 3 location, giving the x, y, z x at 0, y at 0, z at 5. So it's going to set it up a little bit looking down on it and then add this to our scene. It helps if we put this in the right place. So let's pull that down a little bit. There we go. It should be below the scene creation. There we go. That looks a little prettier. I want our code to look pretty as much as we can. Don't worry about if your script goes on to the second line of typing. Just don't press enter. Of course, with JavaScript and TypeScript, all lines are designated at the end with a semicolon. Okay, so let's add some controllers to this so that we can now use our keys or mouse to be able to move camera around inside the environment. That's done with a camera.attach control. Do note that Babylon makes heavy use of Camelback naming conventions for properties and methods so lowercase a uppercase c for doing this this will be attaching the it to the canvas and telling it to continue to receive all operations or mouse movements that are related to the canvas should be sent to the camera control that's what the true designates okay so let's add a light to our scene i'm going to name the light Light 1 is my only light. Uh, again, this is a new Babylon, Babylon capitalized, and this is going to be hemispheric light. The name of the light is going to be Light 1 for use within our scene graph. And then New Babylon Vector 3 for the location of the light. Really doesn't matter since we're doing a hemispheric light, but we're going to set that at an X of 1, Y of 1, Z of 0, and then add that to the scene that we designated for this environment. So now I think we're ready to start actually adding some objects to the scene. Let's begin by adding a simple sphere. And don't be afraid to pause this video to get the code in. My students always say that it's best to watch one of my videos because they can pause me and then be able to catch up on the typing. I know that I do tend to talk a little bit fast. Okay, so here's our sphere. Again, I'm being real original in my variable naming, so I'm going to name the sphere sphere. Using the Babylon.mesh builder, we're going to use the dot create sphere method. The sphere will be the name of it in the scene graph. We'll give the sphere a diameter of two units and then add it to the scene. Now, just simply by adding this code and saving it, if I go back to my browser, I now have the sphere in there I'm able to rotate it by dragging with my mouse rotate is actually rotating around the sphere though it's kind of hard to tell with the sphere since it's you know round we've got our sphere added let's go ahead and change the position of the sphere just slightly moving it up a little bit so that we've got room to add a cube below it there's my sphere make it pretty okay so sphere.position.y equal to 2 changes the location of 0. By default, objects will come in at 0, 0, 0. So I'm changing that to y. We'll save our scene and refresh. The sphere moves up a little bit. Great. So let's add a cube or a box. It's actually referred to as a box in the Babylon API, but I think of it as a cube. Okay, so variable cube is set equal to the Babylon Mesh Builder and we'll do a create box. Cube will be the name of it in the scene graph. We'll give it a size of one and add it to the scene. So again we can save, do a refresh, and there we go. We've now got a cube and if I use my arc rotate camera 
you can see I'm starting to rotate around it. Let's rotate that cube a little bit. We can use the rotation controls built into the system. So let's make it rotate. And we're going to do just some real simple change the cube dot rotation dot x, y, and z and give it some values and save. And now we've rotated the cube just a little bit. So that makes it a little more interesting to look at. First thing that we need to do if we're going to start adding materials to objects in code like this, we need to go ahead and create a variable to hold the material that's going to be used. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called material sphere, which is obviously the material for the sphere. And we're going to set that equal to new Babylon standard material. We'll call this texture one in the scene graph and associate that with the scene. Now, nothing's happened yet. All I've done is created the material variable that's going to hold what's going to be applied to the sphere. So let's do something with that to make it a little more interesting. For the variable material sphere, we're going to set a diffuse color. Notice the C is capitalized in diffuse color, equal to a new Babylon color of one. What's a one? Well, the color three uses RGB, red, green, blue. So if I'm giving it a value of one, I'm saying set the color to red. You can do any mixture of values between zero and one for your colors. So this is a decimal thing. If it's got a zero, it's considered no color. If it's got a one, it's the full color. So if I apply this to my scene, my sphere should now be red. Oh, one thing. Yes, the red exists, but it's not applied to the sphere. Silly me. Let's add the association between the color and the sphere. We can do that by setting the sphere's material back here, our sphere, where we've created the sphere. Well, the sphere has a property of material, and we can set that equal to the material sphere. So sphere.material equals material sphere. Okay, a little confusing there, but anybody who looks at that code knows what you're talking about. And now our sphere is red, and we've got some success. But wait, there's more. Let's say I wanted to add a texture to my cube. Now, if you're working with textures, usually a texture is a JPEG or PNG file that you've created in Photoshop or GIMP or some other graphics program. You can also use Substance and all the great tools associated with that if you're wanting to do some physics-based rendering PBR for your materials. But for right now, we're going to keep it real simple. I'm going to create a texture for my cube. Here's a new variable, and it's going to be set equal to material. We'll create material cube, same thing that we did before. We're going to set up a standard material, call this texture two for our scene graph. And now all we need to do is go ahead and associate that with an actual file. This file needs to be in the same folder on your system as your index or your HTML file or a subfolder off of that. So if you're building this scene, make sure you save this to a folder, and then inside that folder, you've got to have your JPEGs. So I've got a simple JPEG here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay, I did find it real quick. So here's the ground.jpg file. As you can see, it's kind of a gravelly dirt JPEG image. So we're going to use that for our Babylon texture to put on the cube. Of course, this also would look great on a plane or something like that. Lots of JPEGs, and it's good to have a good collection or have artistic ability or a friend with artistic ability so that you can create great textures to be used inside your environment. Okay, so we've got the ground JPEG loaded, but it's not yet associated with the cube. Just as we did before with the sphere, we now need to associate the cube material with material cube. So we'll save that. We'll refresh our browser. And now you can see our cube has the dirt applied to it as the texture. Okay, that's a quick and dirty ha, 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 introduction to loading in basic meshes into the system. In previous videos, we've looked at loading your GLTF files into the system. So we know how to do that. So now we've got scenes, we've got basic meshes. 
if you're interested in what else you can do with the scene builder or with mesh builder to insert into your scene here's just a short list you've got cylinders dash lines decals this ground ground from height map we'll get into that later icosphere lathe line system lines planes polygons polyhedrons ribbons spheres tiled ground torus torus knot tube polygon shape and shape custom lots of basic meshes can be loaded in just with using the command line you've got the full api here if you go to doc.babylonjs.com the api and then go to classes babylon mesh builder give you a quick outline of some of the things that can be loaded in and experimented with tons of things that you can do also with the materials i've barely scratched the surface on working with materials you can work with the alpha, you can change the spectral, you can add all kinds of additional tools and tweaks to it. I've got students that are doing some absolutely amazing things with working with the meshes and the materials inside of Babylon without even starting to load in what they've created with Blender or Maya. So go ahead and experiment with that. If there's something specific that you would like to see me cover in our discussion of Babylon JS, or you want to learn more about a specific title, or if you want me to jump in deeper into these individual meshes or materials, please let me know in the comments below. Have a great day.